what up people, it's your boy the Kryptonian saying here, bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 416, and the chapter opens up, you got Sanji, well before I get to the chapter real quick, I want to ask a question, I know Oda likes to foreshadow a lot, so on chapter 416, on the cover page, this isn't a One Piece cover, uh, where there's like a cover story, but on the page, you got Nami, and she's standing in front of this, uh, rhinoceros got like the horn and everything and on it it says lost child so i'm just curious because i want to know something is oda foreshadowing something on that because it's very telling this text on there just just something i want to throw out and also in the sbs corner one of the things that oda says is that if anel or enryu came to the east blue his bounty would be well over 500 million berries. That's fucking insane. So, with that being said, this chapter, it opens up. Sanji says that food is made by gods, but spices are made by the devil. Maybe this is just a little too spicy for uh, Jabba, uh, Jabra. So, I thought that that was pretty cool just to have that bit in there. Now, another thing is we got to see Sanji's reaction to... Uh, Zoro versus Kaku and he says so the moss heads trying to bring down the whole fucking tower I love that I love how it jumps over to Spandom and he's forcing Nico Robin to look at the gates of justice opening and it's very very cruel what he's doing because he knows Robin has the will to live again and he's trying to break it from her before they start crossing uh, the bridge to get through to the open gates of justice I thought that was really a really asshole move to do but very smart on his part so I thought that that was pretty cool to see that but another thing I thought was really interesting is as they're waiting for the uh, bridge to open up right so they can walk forward you got the Navy and they're saying 10 minutes to the buster call so the members of CP9 they are going down shit is getting real but at the same time Luffy and the others are running out and Rob Lucci is standing in between Luffy and Frankie getting to Nico Robin and you got Usopp and uh, Nami they're trying to make their way they're going a different route and you got Sanji following suit all the keys for the most part except for Kaku's key have been collected so this is going to be key I'm thinking Oda's going to have a setup where Rob Lucci's key is the one that's going to unlock uh, the one that Nico Robin has it just makes sense but very interesting to see how he kind of has that going forward. Now, this fight with Zoro and Kaku might fuck around and be my favorite fight out of all of these that's happened so far in Ian's Lobby because Zoro, he's blocking a few attacks and you get this really cool sequence of events where Zoro, he's using his three swords, he's blocking, he puts on the bandana at one point, goes to the two sword style and it's just a classic game of one-upsmanship and you got the name calling at one point Zoro's it's like horsey 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 and you got Kaku totally feeding into it just like what Khalifa did where he's basically saying this off the wall shit to throw Zoro off and he looks like a big ass refrigerator and he's just got the arms and legs moving and he's actually sending up slices into the air and it's causing the roof to come down and even Zoro says that this is becoming a hell of a pain and so you're seeing that these CP9 guys they're very calculated and they have to be because they're assassins and the Straw Hats are having to adapt as they fight this is really good like this is probably the biggest challenge because when you look at all their fights before there was some strategy involved but ultimately I feel like their fights did come down to who could outlast the other and who had the stronger will whereas with this one you have to be able to adapt mid battle and if this is the midway point this makes sense you know I know one piece is a long ass story but let's say this is a quarter of the way through this would start the transition period where their whole fighting mentality has to change and because this is a battle shonen as much as it is an adventure shonen it makes sense now the other part of this is I like how Zoro stops fucking around like you know when Zoro puts the bandana on this shit's gonna get real but I like how Zoro stops fucking around and he goes into the gorilla form and even Kaku says to himself like this dude's really strong what amazing power and it just shows you that 
Zoro has hit that point where there's no fucks given. Zoro's going right in for the kill. And he even tells Kaku, he says, you're one of those guys, you've never thought about the possibility of being defeated. It's time to bring your head out the clouds. And it's Zoro basically saying that he's going to humble them. I thought that that was really key. I thought that was a really nice line there. And it's Oda's way of saying, especially when it gets to uh, Anel, because in the SBS corner, that's one of the things that he says, is that Luffy told Anel that there's even stronger guys on the Blue Sea than Anel. So it's just fitting how all this kind of weaves in together from the Q&A that he does with the fans to the actual chapter itself. Very good. And that's going to be my chapter question to you guys. Was there ever a moment for you where you yourself were humble? And I can say for me, I remember it was my junior year of college, right? I had just made Dean's List for the first time, right? And like that was the highest grade point average I had ever gotten in a semester, okay? And I remember the next semester, I'm speaking to one of my classmates, right? And she's in one of my writing groups. And I'm talking to her and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I made Dean's List. I was popping, I was popping mad shit, right? And she just kind of looked at me and she said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, that's cool. What's your grade point? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm at a 3.45 in my major. I'm at a 3.7. She said, oh, that's really good. I've got a 3.8. Bam, I got humble. Because we only went to a 4.0 scale. And right there, I got humble. Because she's one of those ones, like, you knew she was smart, but at the same time, you kind of just kind of say, oh, maybe. Like, you just weren't too sure how intelligent she was. And that kind of stopped me from saying, okay, I'm not I'm not as smart as I think I am. So that's my sharing of a story. But what's your thought, guys? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, make sure you comment, rate, subscribe, share. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Have an awesome day, guys. <laughs>